Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video and another in our series of Pigment Powders 101. Today we're going to be using some everyday household objects and things to do some classic watercolour-ish techniques but using pigment powders to create our watercolours. Today we're going to be using the Hunky Dory Prism World of Colour Pearlescent Powders. I picked these up at a charity shop a little while ago because I was curious to see what they were like. And they are very similar to Luscious Powders and Cosmic Pixie Powders. They're very highly pigmented with a gentle pearlescence to them. The paper I'm going to be using is mixed media paper because it takes water really well. You could use watercolour paper and the first technique I'm going to do is blowing bubbles. So I've got a little dish here with some warm soapy water. So I've put a couple of drops of dish soap in the water and filled it about, that's about three quarters of an inch from the top. And what I'm going to do today is I think I'll mix two powders. So I've got some yellow here. And I'm going to pop that in. Not quite sure what amount to add right now. So I'm going to put some blue in and hopefully we'll get a green. So I'm giving this a stir with a straw. I'll get those out of the way. Get those out of the way. And then I'm going to blow. Definitely don't suck blow bubbles into this and have my paper at the ready. So the bubbles have come well over the top of the bowl and that's exactly how I want them. So I'll press my paper down like that and I'll get some bubble prints. I think I need a little bit more pigment, it's very pale. I can see the mica powder swirling around in there. We'll get another piece. So that's got more colour in it and you can definitely see where the bubbles were on there. And we'll set that aside to dry. So I'm going to add a little bit more blue. To increase the intensity and make it a bit bluer. There we go, it's a nice teal colour now. And what you can do is layer these up. So this is one I did earlier with just blue powder, but now I can add a layer of green. So now we've got some lovely green bubbles on top of the blue bubbles. Now as a quick experiment, I just want to see how pigmented this watery mix is. Quite pigmented. I can not waste all the powder that was in there. I can just brush it over a piece of mixed media paper and create a panel again that I can use later on. For this next technique I'm going to use radiant rose and opalescent orange and I'm going to put some water here because I'm going to make a paint for smushing with and I really don't want an awful lot of this pigment they are so super pigmented. And I'm going to start with the lightest colour. That's the yellow down. Now for the radiant rose. And I'm picking up lots of water because I want this to be really wet and smushed. 
because what I'm going to do now is add some salt in a few places. You can use big chunks of salt or fine salt, whatever you've got in your cupboard and sprinkle that around because what will happen is the salt will suck all the liquid towards it and you will get these really interesting rings forming around the salt as the pigment and the liquid dry on the card. So again, I'm going to set that aside to dry and we'll come back to that later. I think I might have got a bit of blue pigment powder in there as well, but that doesn't matter. And for the next technique, I'm going to bring in the pearly pink. Again, not have too much. Just add that there. Take a bit of mixed media paper. Pick up my colours with my smusher. I want lots of liquid again for this technique. Now for some pink. And you can even give it a little bit of a spritz with a water sprayer to make sure it's nice and wet. And then we're going to take some cling film and put it on here, scrunch it up and press it down so lots of the cling film is in contact with that wet paint. And when that dries, it will leave a really interesting pattern. So I think we'll use some pearly pink again and maybe some sparkling sapphire and I'm going to smush it on in a minute but I've got a little bottle here of isopropyl alcohol also known as rubbing alcohol and I'm going to use that in a minute so I'm going to pick up let's do the lighter colour the pink we'll smush that on now grab some of the blue, I might add a bit more water to that so it's not quite as strong. And now I'm going to take an old paintbrush because I don't want to damage the bristles of a decent paintbrush and spatter on some IPA, isopropyl alcohol. And that will make some really interesting splattering and halo effects. So again, we'll set that aside to dry. So the next thing I'm gonna use is Artist Blue Masking Fluid. It's not necessarily a household object or supply, but it is something you can pick up at a craft shop or an art shop. And it's for preserving the color of the paper behind the watercolor or ink that you're gonna put on top. So you get a bit on your brush. Again, you probably want an old brush for this. And you make a shape, you paint whatever you want. So there's a little leaf there. And another one. We'll just paint a few leaves. Make sure the whole leaf shape is covered. You want to cover all the paper that you want to stay paper coloured. This is a very thick brush but I couldn't find my tiny little masking brush. It's gone for a little walk. Not sure where. And this can take quite a while to dry but you do want it to be completely dry before you add any colour on top of it. You can buy masking pens. I've used those before and those can be quite successful for masking off areas. Another technique you can do with these is emboss resist so I've got some mixed media paper and a stamp I'm going to treat the paper with corn flour to remove all the static and greasy fingerprints etc etc and I'm going to stamp with embossing ink I'm going to dip that in clear embossing powder and heat it with my heat tool. And now I've got some water on my mat. I can take some yellow pigment powder and add a little bit. Get a bit more water and pick it up with my smusher and smush it on over the 
embossed words. I've chosen yellow for this because it says, here's to one more trip around the sun. I'm also gonna bring in some orange towards the middle to make it stand out, to make the stamping stand out. So that's a bit stronger, so that can go more in the middle. And that's a really fun, splashy effect. Now the paper's curled because it was heated and then wet, but that's okay, it will dry, or I can pop it in between some heavy books, or run it through a die cutting machine to flatten it out once it's all nice and dry. I think actually I will use my hairdryer because I want to do some splattering on it, so I think a hairdryer will be the quickest route to that. I've got my miniature smusher here, which is a domed blending sponge on a handle covered in a bit of plastic and secured with a hairband. And I'm gonna use that to do some more accurate smushing and splashing. And if I want to, I can always add a bit more color to my water to get something a bit more intense. So I can really bring that in around the words. And that's really making them pop now. I'm going to dry that with my hairdryer and then do some splattering. I'm going to pick up some of this with a paintbrush and just tap it to get those splatters. And again, I can concentrate them around the middle so there's a good variation across the front there. So I hope you can see all that gorgeous shimmer and shine. When you let watercolory things pool and dry so when there's uneven moisture across the piece you get these little puddles and things like shimmer powders go into those little puddles and really sort of congregate and make a lovely shiny area so with these prism powders i find that they do have more of a tendency to rub off than say the luscious powders or the cosmic pixie powders or Nouveau Shimmer Powders. I've used those in the past, I haven't got any at the moment. So if you find your pigment powder rubs off when dry, get yourself some cheap hairspray or some fixative and spray it on. And that will lock the pigment and the mica onto the page and shouldn't dull the shine too much. So here are all the panels we've created so far in this video. This one, the one with the cling film, is now ready, I think. And I hope you can see how you get these lovely lighter areas where the cling film touches the ink and the paint. And around the edges of them, you get that concentration of the shimmery mica. So it's got a really lovely pastel shimmer to it. This one I am going to leave overnight with the rest of them so that that masking fluid has a really good chance to dry and then I'll put some colour on it tomorrow. So it is the next day and here are the three backgrounds that we didn't take a closer look at yesterday. So this is the one where I dripped isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol onto a smushed wet background and I hope you can see that there are these little circles with a halo around the outside and that's the effect that you get when dripping IPA onto a wet pigment powdered smushed background and that's quite a nice effect almost looks like bubbles this is the one where I put salt onto a smushed background and left it to dry I've also given it a bit of a blast with my hairdryer to make sure it's really dry and what I'm going to do now is scrape carefully the salt off. This is a classic watercolour painting technique that's used to give some texture to areas of your painting, but it works just as well with pigment powders. So I hope you can see here that, again, you get this almost halo effect where the salt has sucked some of the water and colour out of the paper. 
and that can be a really lovely effect if you want to add some texture. So this is the piece of paper onto which I painted some leaves with masking fluid and I've just added some water here because I want to create a green paint with these prism pearlescent powders and I'm going to take ever such a tiny amount really small because I don't want it to be too strong and again here with the yellow because these are so pigmented as I've, I think I've said lots of times before almost just have to dip the spatula in and then knock off the powder and I'm going to take my smusher and I think we will do the yellow first and smush that on like that and then the blue and that's going to create a lovely green for us and I'm going to dry that and then come back and add another layer so I'm going to get some more of the blue and tap it into there just to intensify the colour a bit and add that over the top you don't have to smush obviously you can paint with a paintbrush or apply the paint however you want <clears throat> and dry it again and I think one more bit of blue to make that's going to be quite dark have some yellow tiny tiny amounts you could use a brush to pick this up and then tap it on okay so that's a lot stronger but that's okay because it's our last actually what I'm going to use is my mini smusher for this well I was going to use my mini smusher for this but I put it down and I can't see it right now so I'm just going to use a corner of my big smusher and go in and smush a darker green around the middle and I'm going to pick up this paint here and add some splatters just to get a bit more vibrancy going like that and get that all nice and dry. If you get paint pooling, uh, we don't quite want it to pull. You can always get a bit of paper towel and just lift up some of the colour to make sure that it's the intensity that you want. So the paint is dry on the paper and to make sure the paint is dry on the masking fluid because I don't want to smear it I'm just going to roll over a paper towel give it one more blast and now I can remove the masking fluid the dried fluid and all you do is rub your finger over it and it lifts up in a kind of elastic -y way you can use a masking fluid eraser for this you can buy those at art shops and craft shops but i find usually my finger is adequate if you oops if you can hear any noise in the background that is the neighbor's cat she's come to see me today and is now chasing a christmas bauble around the floor of my craft room It's a plastic bauble, by the way, so she won't hurt herself. What you could do with this is you could stamp some images, say some leaves, and then when the ink is completely dry, paint over the whole image with masking fluid, then do your smushing, let it dry, peel off the masking, and then you'll be left with um, clear stamped images surrounded by your lovely inking. Or if you did it, like I did it, you can then take a pen and you could draw your image in and you could make it line up perfectly or you could offset it slightly, whatever you fancied really. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the world is your oyster. And of course this isn't limited to using paints made with pixie powders, you can make your paint or use watercolour paint or whatever, anyhow you like. So here we go, lots of backgrounds. We've got our leafy one, our saucy one, our alcohol one, emboss resist, that's the cling film one. Then we've got bubbles. Some of these I made on video, some of these I made prior to... Oh, cat! 
Some of these I made as practice runs prior to the video. This is another salty one. I made this one by mixing some pigment powders with alcohol and then smushing that down onto them. I used press and seal on that one and it didn't work particularly well. It wasn't what I wanted, but I'll keep it and I'll use it for something else. That one's just regular smushing. And that was the one I painted with the bubbly water. So I think what I want to do next, because I do like to make a card for you every video, I'm going to use this salty background to make a card. And I'm going to just make it and switch the voiceover for this bit because the cat is on the prowl and I think we're going to get a lot of background noise from her. So for today's card, I decided to do a fractured card. So what I did was cut a square from my piece of salty pigment powder paper. And then I took that square and blue tacked it onto a piece of smooth white cardstock, which is going to act as my front panel. Then I used some skinny strip dies to cut some skinny strips from some gold cardstock and glued those around the edge of the square that I'd blue tacked down. And this will give me the borders to my fractured panels. Once those were all stuck down I used a pair of scissors to snip off the overhang and then I took the salty panel that I'd cut the square from and then cut the pieces to go around the outside. I did this roughly with scissors first and then I used my guillotine to make sure I had a 90 degree angle, a right angle to tuck against the gold strips. So I did this all the way around the outside until I had all my bits and bobs stuck down. I did use some deli paper to press everything down and this is just great for making sure you can press down firmly whilst not getting glue all over your fingers or gluey fingers all over your card front. You don't have to use deli paper for this, you can use grease proof paper, anything that won't stick to the glue. So after that I trimmed off the overhang again using my guillotine and I used my tape runner to stick that panel down to another piece of smooth white cardstock and trimmed around the outside to give it a nice slim white border. I could have given it a gold border but I didn't want too much gold. I think metallic accents look great when they're not overdone. To bevel the edges of my panels, I ran around the outside with an embossing tool and then I stuck everything down to a smooth white cardstock card blank that's about four by six inches in size. Next, I took the same stitched square die that I'd used earlier and cut a square from smooth white cardstock. I then glued this on the front panel in the space left by the square that I'd blue tacked down earlier. And this gives me a nice bit of contrast between that busy background of smushed salty pigment powder and the white square. Then for a focal point, I took one of my homemade shimmer sprays. I think this was the one that I made with a bit of green and a bit of teal luscious powder. Sprayed it on some card, die cut a flower from it, and then I sprayed it again because it wasn't quite intense enough. But once that was dry, I also cut a flower from vellum, and then I stuck the green tealy flower on top of the vellum offset slightly so the vellum was still peeking out and then stuck the whole thing over that white square on the front panel. 
And that stands out really nicely because I've got analogous colours in the background, colours that are near each other in the rainbow or on the colour wheel, pinks, reds, yellows. And I've got a nice pop of green, which is complementary to that. The green is on the other side of the colour wheel from the red. So that really stands out nicely. For my sentiment, I chose a pre-printed and pre-cut sentiment from my folder of sentiments. It says sending warm hugs. And I thought that went well with all the lovely warm colours. And I popped that up on some craft foam to give it a bit of dimension. And that's this card and this video done. I hope you've enjoyed it and that it's given you lots of ideas of things to do with your pigment powders. If it has, do leave a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you back here very soon for the next episode. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.